In today's show, your trade ideas sent in from listeners plus free agent bargain shopping for big men. Welcome to Locked On Blazers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Trailblazers, your daily Portland Trailblazers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, world? It's your past first point guard and Trailblazers reporter, Mike Richmond. You are listening to another episode of Locked On Blazers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, available wherever you get podcasts and also on YouTube. Thanks for making this show your first listen. Coming at you every single weekday, Monday through Friday. So make it a part of your daily routine. Make it your first listen. Tell your friends to do the same. It's Locked On Blazers, your team every day. In today's show, we're list- we are... Running through your trade ideas. In yesterday's episode, I asked for you to submit your best Anthony Simons trade ideas. Because if the Blazers are going to move forward and they're going to move forward with Dame as their stated goal, uh, we'll see stated goal how stated goals change. More on that in a moment. But if they're going to move forward with their stated goal to be good and have Damian Lillard on the roster, it, it's kind of a given that that Anthony Simons is going to be traded or needs to be traded for them to be like close to competitive for a variety of reasons. So I asked you, list, dear listeners, to submit trade ideas, and I got a whole bunch. I got a whole bunch of them, and I'm super thankful for them. I've picked three good ones that I think were relatively common and um, and just like, you know, it's it's my show, personal preference, ones I liked. Uh, so, But thank you, thank you, thank you for all, all of those who submitted, um, submitted your trade ideas. We will get into that in the first segment. Then I got an idea for dreaming even bigger than any of the trade ideas that all of you sent me. And finally... We'll close the show as promised in yesterday's program with some bargain ideas for big men. Uh, some some ways that Blazers can spend can fill out the back half of the roster with minimum contracts. But first, let's just get into let's get into the trade ideas. Let's start with the oldest one in my inbox. Not the oldest trade idea I've ever been sent, but uh, in this ilk of in this sort of this run of trades, this is the oldest one that was sent to me. This was sent to me by Colin in May. Colin sent me this, uh, the Blazers season had ended, but this is pre, um, pre-draft pre lottery, or excuse me, uh, yeah, pre-draft lottery kind of like, hey, hey, I got an idea. Colin called this a win-win situation. And let me be clear. I told Colin, I hate this trade idea. And here we are in June, the end of June. Uh, you're listening to this, this is, uh, this is Friday, June 30th show, and this has really popped up, including on Bill Simmons' podcasts. And if Simmons is saying it, then anyone who who pretends they didn't get ideas directly from Bill Simmons is using it as their own and putting it out on the internet as well. But Colin sent me this back in May. And the structure of it at the time was Anthony Simons to the Chicago Bulls with two second-round picks attached. And the Bulls would return DeMar DeRozan. This trade at the time included the Blazers sending out the 2023 pick and the Bulls would send back the 2024 pick, a pick swap, and uh, and that would be that. Um, the Blazers, of course, used that pick in 20, uh, the 2023 pick and they still owe the Bulls this this first round protected, or a protected pick, lottery protected pick through 2028. Um, in, insanely long protections from that trade, but I think they really thought they were going to make the playoffs because they had a team that should have made the playoffs. But it blew up in their face, and everything has kind of gone haywire since then. Um, but I maintain that was a playoff caliber roster. They just uh, ate a lot of dirt. So this was back in May, but things have changed. But shout out to Colin because a lot of other listeners sent in a similar version of this trade. I will say I like, I don't still don't like this trade. Uh, let's get into sort of how I'd modify it, and they'll tell you why I don't like it. But I, I think it's worth I think it's worth discussing. Um, I, Obviously, the Blazers are not going to send out Chris Murray, their their pick. I mean, their 23th pick, because that doesn't necessarily... I mean, maybe the Bulls would allow it. But let's say they do the same pick swap thing. Blazers say, hey, Bulls, we'll give you the 2024 first pick, our first round pick in 2024. That's next summer's pick. Uh, you give us your 2025 pick. We'll call it, we'll call it fair. We'll call it even. Everyone's cool. We're good. We're, we're good to go. We'll take DeMar DeRozan. You get Amphrey Simons and a couple second rounders. Bing, bang, boom. Uh... Blazers have their future picks to trade now. Obviously, they wouldn't have their 2024 pick to trade, so they wouldn't be able to. Uh, they they would have to, you know, deal with trades on out uh, beyond the 2025 draft. But you get DeRozan, and so you lose a couple future seconds. 
you've got a veteran swingman who can get stuff done. Here's why I don't like it. DeMar DeRozan is probably better than Amphrey Simons, like without, like right now, today, he's probably a better basketball player than him. Um, I don't think that's super controversial. He's bigger, too. That helps. Um, he can really score on his own. He's a better defensive player. He's not a very good defensive player. He mostly guards threes and fours at this point in his career. Like, he guards a lot of power forwards just because he's not fast like he once was. But he's, he's, he's like, he was a... The Bulls were a really good defensive team last year, despite having a bunch of bad defensive, like individual bad defenders on the roster. Shout out to Billy Donovan, probably a pretty darn good coach. Um, it's they weren't very good though for for a variety of other, for a variety of other reasons, including um, maybe in a somewhat somewhat clunky offense, um, and even despite having good offensive players, a weird team. Um, but like I think DeRozan is an upgrade on both sides of the ball from Anthony Simons. But he's in his mid-30s. Amphrey Simons is 24. DeMar DeRozan is a decade older. And when you make this trade, you don't get that much closer to winning a title. You're a better basketball team, and you probably have a much higher floor in terms of like making the playoffs. But I don't even think a Dame, Shaden Sharp, DeRozan, Jeremy Grant, Nurk team is like... I, don't, I, I do not even think that is a guaranteed avoid-the-play-in roster in the West. It probably avoids the plan. It would certainly have a chance to avoid the plan and finish in one of those top six spots. Might even have a chance to finish in one of the top four spots if DeRozan stays healthy. Dude's a bucket. Scores, you know, can go get his own offense and all those things. He's, like, legitimately good friends with Dame. It would it would help, um, whatever, assuage those concerns. But uh, I just don't think it gets you that close. And you've now traded Amphrey Simons for a dude 10 years older than him. And I just, I'm not... If you have to do something like this, you see why the other alternatives are so appealing. So, Colin, you were right. Everyone everyone caught up to your idea, Colin. You get all the credit. And guess what? Here we are at the end of June. I still don't. I still don't love it. But this was one that a bunch of people sent in. Um, a lot of folks like it, so I'll let you all like it. But it ain't. It's not my Huckleberry. It's not. It's not for me. Next trade was sent in that a, that a lot of folks or many folks sent in was some version of this sent in by listener Alex, which is the Blazers send out Amphrey Simons and a future first round pick in exchange for OG Ananobi and Precious Achua of the Toronto Raptors. Precious Achua is like a 6'9 center. He's like he's like a four, power forward size center skill set. Um, his, his hands are a little... His hands are a little suspect, uh, and I don't think he's very impactful on defense, despite having some skills to be pretty impactful on defense. Um, but he's an energy guy, and he can roll to the rim, and he's got, when he plays well, it's like, you can you kind of you could really see it. There are some moments when Precious Achua is rolling for the Raptors, and you're like, oh yeah, he can play, um, but he's, the consistency is just not there for him. Um, OG Ananobi is kind of the dream. It's kind of the dream. Well, I say a lot of people sent this in, uh, list, and and I'm, I'm choosing Alex's because Alex's was the closest to sort of realistic. A lot of you included trade ideas where the Blazers would send multiple future first round picks that they don't own. They don't have those picks back from the Bulls. You can't really promise out a 2026 and a 2030 pick or a 24, 2024 and a 2028 pick if you don't have them. If you don't have them, so then it's like multiple trades. You got to free up the pick from the Bulls. So do you? Do you kill the protections on that Bulls pick in 2024 and then trade a 2026 and a 2028 pick? That's basically three picks for OG and Anobi. Is that worth it? I don't think so. So um, Alex, in the version that uh, that listener Alex sent, was a 2026 pick. But I'm saying they don't have that, y'all. They don't have that pick to trade. So I'm calling it a future first. And what we'll call it in the future first is we'll just amend the the conveyance language, which says... Two years, exactly two years after the pick is owed to the Bulls. So the, the Blazers are eventually, they're eventually going to make the playoffs. And at that point, they will give the Bulls their, um, they will give the Bulls the pick they, that is owed to them because it's lottery protected. So the Blazers finally get out of the lottery. They'll give the Bulls a pick. And then you can't trade the following year. I mean, you might be able to, but you, as like the rules work, you couldn't trade the following year. It'd be the year after. So the first available pick after the Bulls uh, pick is conveyed. So a future first Anthony Simons for OG and Precious. OG is really good. If this is the trade, this is the one I am smashing the yes button on. I, I put the good one in the middle, like reverse Goldilocks. So that means I don't like the third one either, but we'll talk about that in a second. Um, it is the thing about this deal is that I think OG is probably pretty overrated right now, but he's also just like exactly what the Blazers need. He's young. 
He's, um, you know, he's he, he's entering free agency next summer, but like you'll you'll have a chance to re-sign him. He's got some offensive upside that I think is somewhat untapped, and he's just a really good defensive player. He can play both forward spots. He can guard a variety of positions. Um, if things go south with Damian Lillard, OG Ananobi can still be on the roster, and you can build forward with him as a young player, part of what's next. Like. This is really this to me. This is by far the most appealing idea. Is the question is whether Raptors accept it? In the past, it seems like the Raptors have wanted a cajillion first round picks and young parts and Shaden Sharp and Anthony Simons in exchange for OG and Obi, and you just don't do that. But things have changed in in Toronto. Fred Van Vliet looks very likely to walk. It's the reporting from Mark Stein of the of of the Stein of the Stein line, a couple other places, but I first saw it with Mark Stein. Is that Fred Van Vliet is going to sign a two year deal? with the Houston Rockets. He's just going to walk. Losing Fred Van Vliet for nothing is just like classic holding on to your holding on to your precious gems until they end up someone else's precious gems. Um, good job, Masai. Incredible GM. Probably botched the end of this era a little bit. This is the first one that truly is like a botching is, is losing Fred Van Vliet for, for nothing when you like clearly should have pivoted probably at the trade deadline when you were mediocre. But who am I to say? Who am I to say? But having no point guard makes Ant a little more appealing. He can run some of the point guard duties, although he's not a great, that's not his premier skill set at this point in his career. You can have Scotty Barnes take over some playmaking duties until he's ready to get there. And then you can have like cheap backups run some other minutes. It, it, it You can get there with it. Would the Raptors accept this deal? I don't know. I think this is close, and I think it gets closer because of what has recently happened in Toronto. But um, the reason this is appealing is because you're not 100% sure the other team would take it. Also, if they don't want to include Precious, if that's like a uh, uh, deal breaker for Toronto, take them out of the deal. The, what, what you want is OG, and you'll do it. If you can get OG for Ant in a future first, I think you pound that yes button. Okay, one more listener trade, and it involves a team in yellow. That's what we will talk about in the uh, second segment. Join me there, won't you? But before we do that, I want to tell you about Prize Picks. It's daily fantasy made easy. I play Prize Picks on my phone. I use the app, but you can also play on PrizePicks.com. Com. How it works is you pick between two and six players on every entry. Whatever sport you're looking for, they're going to set statistical lines. You go above or below those lines, and it's just you versus the prize picks projections. You pick between two and six players on every entry. You go six for six. You can win 25 times your money, but you can call your shots. Say four out of six, five out of six. Uh, head your best a little bit. Make the money. You set. You kind of set your lines, and you and you can decide how 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 froggy you are truly feeling and how much you would like to wager. You get safe and fast withdrawals whenever it comes back to you. So go take advantage today. Go to prizepicks.com or download the app. And when you do sign up, new users can sign up using the promo code locked on to get a hundred percent deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Put in a hundred bucks, giving you a hundred bucks, put in 50 bucks, giving you 50 bucks. So don't wait, take advantage today. And don't forget when you do to use that promo code locked on when you sign up. All right. Yeah, we got another, we got another fake trade. This one comes from listener Kyle. Listener Kyle offers the Indiana Pacers. That team in yellow, I promised, gets Amphrey Simons, Yusuf Nurkic, and a first-round pick after the Chicago pick conveys top four protected. I love the specificity, Kyle. Thank you. Plus, possible sweeteners, multiple second-round picks, or Indiana's choice of Portland's non-scoot, sharp, and, uh, and Murray rookie contract player. So basically, like... Do you want Jabari Walker or Keon Johnson for your troubles? Do they? (laughs) I guess guess they'll find out. In exchange, the the Blazers would get back for that Ant Nurk a pick second and a first round pick and some seconds. Miles Turner and Buddy Heald. A lot of people sent this in. Uh, Kyle's made the cut because it had the most specificity and it was the most realistic because the Blazers probably would have to attach a first round pick to give up use of Nurkic in that deal. And maybe you attach some seconds as well because Turner has been relatively coveted. But if you don't need the seconds, you don't include them. This is that was the plus sweeteners as needed portion of that trade. What you'd be willing to give up. Um, Miles Turner is better than Nurk. Uh, Buddy Heald is a competent vet. I, I, I think 
Um, Duke can really shoot it. Um, occasionally he plays good off ball defense. Like he can, like the way he runs around trades, uh, uh, trades, the way he runs around screens, he's pretty good at chasing guys around screens too. Occasionally, sometimes he's totally checked out on defense, but like when Buddy is kind of locked in, he's like a pretty good, he, he guards the type of player he is pretty well. Um, you, you'll see it if you watch, if you watch enough of, um, the Pacers, they're pretty bad on defense this year. So, uh, maybe you won't, won't see it very often, but I think he's, he's like, not always bad on defense. Turner is a stretch five who blocks shots, a rare breed, but uh, maybe increasingly common in sort of the next run of centers. But he, he can shoot it. He's um, he can shoot from mid range. He shoots three pointers. He's a he's a darn good shot blocker. He's like he's comfortable guarding and he's like a drop cover big, but he can guard a little bit in space, but not really. Um, he's like one of those dudes who's a really good athlete, like in terms of like dunks. If you give him runway, it's like oh, Miles Turner got up, but like a really bad athlete in small spaces. He has like bad feet, bad feet in the elevator, great feet on the runway. Um, he's he, he would be an upgrade. He's an interesting fit. He'd be a great pick and roll partner with Dame. He doesn't rebound and playing him next to Jeremy Grant is basically like saying that you have decided that rebounds no longer matter, neither offensively or defensively. If a shot is missed, it belongs to the other team. We have, we have given it away because we're either going to score and we're going to shoot 65%. So it won't matter. Or we're just going to pray that the ball bounces to us on the, uh, on the defensive glass. Cause we are going to give up a lot of O boards as well. Um, that front line is probably untenable. Like it really is. I don't think like Jeremy Grant's not a good rebounder, but he could like, you know, he, if you, if you play him in the right lineups, it's okay. Miles Turner is not a good rebounder, but if you play him in the right lineups, it's okay. You can't play two of those dudes together. You just can't, it can't, um, it doesn't work. So while I would be, I guess I would be intrigued by this trade for like the sort of, um, the general upgrade and then you figure it out it would it's just sacrificing it's just sacrificing so much in the glass that i'm that i am i am worried about it those are the listener trades i picked out uh, if you send me a trade that involves sign in trades i just ignored it they're too complicated for me to like double triple quadruple check if um if they work could the blazers get draymond green no no they'd have to clear too much cap space he doesn't want to leave golden state anyways um I don't care which, I don't care who was lying about seeing Draymond Green eating dinner with Dame um, in, in, earlier this week. It's just, it's beyond that stupid rumor. It's all just nonsense. Like it just, it doesn't, it, it's, it's doesn't, there's no, there's no realistic path for the Blazers to, to get a Draymond Green sign and trade. If you sent me other sign and trades, too tricky. If you sent me like four team trades, um, I probably, I probably liked, I probably read through them because I read through like a kajillion emails today, but these were the three of my favorites. Here's the thing. Nobody sent me the trade that the sort of the big trade, the dream bigger trade. And it's partly because of timing. This afternoon, it became, it became official that James Harden's days, not official, official is the wrong word. It was reported by several outlets that James Harden's days in Philly are numbered. You don't have to go far back to uh, me telling you that I thought uh, James Harden or had read that James Harden was going to stay in Philly. I said it on yesterday's show. The league moved so darn quickly. But James Harden, sounds like he's gone. Uh, he was going to enter unrestricted free agency, and it sounds like he was really flirting with, I'm just going to leave and sign with Houston on my own. So Philly agreed to do him a solid. They said, how about this? You opt into your contract uh, for 36 million bucks or whatever it is, right around in that range. Um, and we will trade you to where you need to go so we can get something back for your departure. James Harden effectively choosing his next destination by virtue of unrestricted free agency, which means that Philly has to move on. So nobody sent me the James Harden trade. Um, in fact, actually two listeners did, two listeners did, uh, Kyle of the, of the most, of the most recent trade sent me, uh, sent me a version of that, uh, said, wait, 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 I didn't see this. What about, what about James Harden? And also listener Jesse sent me a, a James Harden pie in the sky, uh, pie in the sky idea. So shout out to you guys for getting, uh, for getting in that late news cycle, but that's just kind of the, the nature of it. No, I don't think James Harden's coming to Portland. Um, it just doesn't make sense. Him and Dame are a terrible pairing together. Um, they both need the ball in their hands. They're both maximized with the ball in their hands. They're both bad on defense. It's just, it's a nightmare. You would I mean, like, would you want it to happen? Sure. It's like a fun, like video game thing. Um, but like, it just, it doesn't make sense. But I will say this, Portland is still, by virtue of not having done anything, 
<laughs> still in a great position to do something. They still have a great package to trade for a star if they want to. They absolutely do. But I'm dreaming bigger than that. Screw James Harden. I mean, I, I kind of find him a little bit annoying. And his career really has been bizarre, particularly the back half of his career. Um, but like... <laughs> I have no ill I have no like true ill will towards towards Jimmy Smooth, a nickname that only I call him. Uh, I've no no ill will towards towards James Harden. But I'm dreaming bigger. Like seven feet three hundred pounds. Like the biggest MVP. That's right. Blow it up, Philly. My fake trade, and I'll give it to you here. Is trading for Joel Embiid. The Blazers have a package to trade for Joel Embiid. Here's why it won't happen. Because, because you don't trade MVPs. You hold on to them as long as you can because it gives you a puncher's chance. And Daryl Morey knows that star hunting is the way to get things done. He hasn't traded James Harden yet. We'll see what happens. I just... I. If they have to tra trade James Harden for like salary relief and then run it back with a, wor with a significantly worth worst roster and just hope that Tyrese Maxey pops... Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's gonna be fun. They turn the keys over more to Tobias Harris. Um, boy, the process is really processing. But um, like, I don't think it's gonna happen. But I'll, but the Blazers are poised to make a move if it were to happen. Say Philly is only gonna get back salary relief, and say they realize, oh no, and Joel Embiid's like salary relief. I'm, t I'm about to turn 29. The clock's ticking. I want I want to play in a freaking conference finals. Get me out of here. I want to move to Portland. I've heard it's nice in the in the fall. It is very briefly, Joel. Very briefly. And then he gets wet and stays wet for all of basketball season. If that's what if that's what JoJo wants, bring him here. The Blazers have the package to do so. Put it together. Anthony Simons. Yusuf Nurkic. Zero Little. Scoot Henderson. You immediately drop the protections on that Chicago pick. You say that 2024 pick is yours. You trade the 2026 pick and the 2028 pick to the, the Philadelphia 76ers. Ant, Nurk, Nas, Scoot Henderson, two unprotected first round picks and the right to swap picks in between there in 2027. Get it done. Damon Joel Embiid is a, is, would be a nightmare pairing for folks. A nightmare pairing. Dream biggest. Now, <laughs> my fake trade was the stupidest of them all, and it's because it's my podcast, but I just like, I want to reiterate this. By virtue of not having done anything, the Blazers are very well positioned to strike for a star. And I think the James Harden situation illustrates how quickly this league moves. James Harden was going to go back to Philly 48 hours ago. And now he's done, done, and going to get traded to the Clippers, it sounds like. That's the reporting from, from Chris Haynes and Adrian Wojnarowski. And Shams Trani. I'll throw Shams in there too. Everybody, all the news brokers out there. He's getting traded to the Clippers. It's going to be Norm Powell and, 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 uh, Mark Eve, and Marcus Morris. Like, woof. <laughs> Talk about a return for Norman Powell. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's better than a Keon and Justice Winslow and Eric Bledsoe's expiring money. You just have to be poised and ready in this league. That's that's the real truth. You have to be poised and ready. And the Blazers, I don't know that they're going to ever make that move and ever push the chips in that they've been flirting with the idea of, but they are ready. If a, if if the league moves as fast as it does and, the, and a star is truly available, the Blazers still, 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 by virtue of having not done so yet, can push their chips in and truly do so. But let's shift gears a little bit. Let's talk about bargain hunting. Uh, yesterday's show, I talked about mid-level exception targets. I want to talk about some minimum targets to close the show as we are on the eve of free agency. So instead of dreaming bigger, let's dream smaller. Join me in that third segment, won't you? But first, let me tell you about game time. It's the number one spot for last minute tickets. It's the plates that you go if you didn't plan months in advance and you still want to go to the game on Tuesday night and it's Tuesday morning. Or if it's concerts or comedy or live theater, whatever it is, you can find it on game time. Plus, they got the game time guarantee. So you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section or in the, and the same row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. You can get paid for finding a better deal. So just... Forget the hassle. Snag tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked on NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, use the redemption code Locked on NBA for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. 
still a pass first point guard. Still Mike Richmond. You are still listening to Locked on Blazers. Yesterday's show, I laid out mid-level exception targets, and I was almost exclusively target. I was exclusively targeting wings, almost exclusively tar- targeting three, four types. Guys who can play small forward and power forward, and also I threw Max Struess in there because I think he could play a little bit of small forward. It sounds like Max Struess is getting the bag. He is not going to be available for the mid-level exception. Congrats to Max Struess. Way to make that money, son. But one thing I didn't do on yesterday's show, let's talk about big men. Because what I had said in that show is that the way the Blazers roster works now and having Yusuf Nurkic there making, you know, 16, 17 million bucks, there is no reason to spend mid-level money to spend 10, 12 million dollars on another big. It's just not a good allocation of your resources, particularly when you have such a huge hole at forward. They just don't have a starting caliber NBA forward on the roster right now. You thought it would be Nazir Little. He's not there yet. Chris Murray's just like, you cannot bank on him being there yet. Uh, Matisse Thibel could play a little bit of that, but I don't think you want to pencil him in for like a 30-plus minute-a-night roll type of thing. Shane Sharp, you hope he gets there by the end of the season, but that is probably too big of an ask. They just don't have spots in the wing. So yesterday's targets, all about wings. Now we're getting cheaper and we're talking bargain fines for big men because I think this is a better allocation of money. If the Blazers have limited tools to go into free agency, uh, if you go listen to Wednesday's show, that will explain the limited tools. If you listen every day, you already know they have limited tools. But if but because of their limitations, let's talk about some bargain bigs. Um, I think the number one name on a lot of folks' lists, and I got this email from a couple of listeners, um, was Mohamed Bamba, who was waived by the uh, Lakers today. Bamba is probably not going to go for the minimum. He's probably going to make more money than that somewhere. Or he's going to return to the Lakers for very little money. Um, if he were a minimum guy, I would say absolutely. Um, I, I probably wouldn't give Mo Bamba a piece of a mid-level I know that he's got fans. Like I know that that uh, Danny Morang is a big time fan of him. I know Kevin O'Connor is a big time fan of him. <laughs> you might want, like, I think go talk to those guys. They'll tell you. They'll if you're a Mo, if you're a Mo Bamba guy, that, those are two great spots. Go listen to Jack Ramsey's. Go listen to um, the various podcasts that Kevin O'Connor is on, uh, and, and and they'll hype him up. They'll hype him up. I promise. For for me, he's not my guy. And like. I think he is the idea of Mobamba rocks. The actuality of Mobamba is like someone who I'd like to pay them a minimum salary to, but I think he'll get more than that. So he's off my list even, but I want to mention him first. Strangely enough, the first name on my list is someone else who got waived today. It's Billy Hernan Gomez. Billy Hernan Gomez doesn't protect the rim and he's just not a very good defender, period. But he's really good on the glass. And for a backup big, I think that's crucial for the Blazers. Just someone who absolutely dominates the defensive glass, dominates the offensive glass, gets extra possessions. Because you get extra possessions, you get to the foul line because you're getting fouled in the mix. Like, dude is, um, you know, he's got a little bit of offensive touch, but really what his strength is is that he is a absolute glass cleaner. I think for a um, for a backup big, like, you want everything, right? Like, you want to sign a player that protects the rim and, sh- and can shoot a little bit and can rebound and has some, oh, playmaking skills. And, like, yeah, you want, like, the, you want the idea of Mohamed Bamba. I get it. I, I, you, you, you've, you've played video games or whatever. You know what you, um, you know what he can be. But I think for the minimum, Billy Herman Gomez, for me, checks a huge box a dude who grabs, who cleans the glass. If you're going to play limited minutes, like I think Drew Eubanks is better than Billy Hernan Gomez. I'm assuming in this exercise that Drew Eubanks is back in the fold for again, right around minimum type money. This is insurance third center type thing or second center if you want to move Drew Eubanks to the third center. This is insurance size, something the Blazers just didn't have last year because they were secretly trying to be bad. (laughs) Not a secret anymore. Uh, Billy Hernan Gomez first on my list. Next guy on my list is Paul Reed, uh, backup big man for the Philadelphia 76ers. I know he's beloved by nerds, and I'm a nerd, so I beloved, I also love B-Ball Paul. Um, for me, he just he's just such a good defensive playmaker. He gets steals, he gets blocks. Even though he's small, he seems to like make stuff happen. Um, totally functional, like b- backup big man. You do not want him to play him big minutes. But again, this is bargain shopping for guys going to fill out the end of the bench. Paul Reed is second on my list. Um, we'll see what Philly does. 
they could bring him back. Maybe they'll, you know, they can pay him more than the minimum if they'd like to. So we will see. We'll see what happens with Paul Reed. But B. Bob Hall, he's he's second on my list. The third name on my list is actually someone who I've I've. If you are a longtime listener, you have heard me float the idea of of this name before. But Dario Sharich, um, I'm a big Sharich guy. I think he rocks. Um, he tore his ACL though. And then I kind of stopped repping him as like a solution, but he, you know, he can, he's, he's just like a solid offensive player. He can score. Um, you know, he's, he does not fill your needs as this like rebounder defender type. So he's not, he's not higher on my list, but charge can like, he can shoot and you can like play him on offense. He can play five. He can sort of play four. Um, you know, he was totally functional in OKC after he it was in that, um, OKC deal. So like he's, he is, um, you know, he's, he would be on my list, but I think he's, he's lower down than the other two guys. Um, he's just, he's, he's like, he's better at basketball than the other two gentlemen I've named. And he's like a 40% three point shooter. Like he's, he's intriguing. He just doesn't check the boxes what the Blazers need. Uh, speaking of former Suns big men or current Suns big men, Jock Landau would have been on this list. Um, I don't know what he's going to get, but he, the Suns made him a restricted free agent. They're going to bring him back. Um, Bismack Biombo is is kind of deep on this list, and he starts the name of sort of deep ideas I have for bargain big men. Bismack Biombo, you know, functional pick and roll guy. If he didn't have terrible hands, he'd be a totally different basketball player. I like him, but um, he's a third center. He's like a third center in the league. He doesn't guard in space. He's, he's just just it's not for not not my not my um it wouldn't be my choice. He's like it's Billy Hernan Gomez, Paul Reed, B- small gap, Dario Saric huge gap uh starting with Bismack. Then the next guy on my list is Goga Bataze. Um Goga can shoot a little bit. He's gigantic. He just um he just doesn't do he just isn't a functional NBA player yet. I thought when he was with the Pacers that he was going to be a functional NBA player. I just like I I really did have a moment when I believe but in in Orlando it just he wasn't that um doesn't do just doesn't do enough do enough on either end he but he is gigantic and can shoot so maybe if you see that you could if you want to squint and say there's something there i could see you talking yourself into goga for the minimum uh the last guy on my list is thomas bryant i straight up love thomas bryant (laughs) he's he rocks he plays his butt off dude plays so hard and he wears his emotions so so openly he plays with joy when he's upset he has a ton of he's just so emotive like he's just he is um he is always just you always know exactly how he feels and he plays so freaking hard he's just bad on defense he's just really bad on defense um you know the the nuggets traded for him thinking he'd be the backup center and he just like didn't play they're just like even in the nba finals or like into the playoffs it's like if they needed a break the glass big solution it was deandre jordan like it was not thomas bryant someone who they had acquired like he just he just didn't fit um and and you know he wasn't going to play for the lakers so they let him go somewhere where he could have a bigger role and he didn't have a role I like Thomas Bryant. I would have no trouble rooting for him, but as like a actual solution, he doesn't bring, he's not good enough on offense to make up for how bad he is on defense. And he's only a five and he doesn't clean the glass and he doesn't, he's not, he's not a, a, a rebounder and he's not a shot blocker. He's any, and, he, and you can just run past him and pick and rolls. Incredibly fun though. If he does end up with a bla- for a blazer, like I will leg- legitimately root for him, even understanding his um, his limitations. So the, here, those are my bargain targets: Billy Hernan Gomez, Paul Reed, Darius Sharich, uh, Bismack Biombo, Gogo Bataze, Thomas Bryant, and if he's there, Mo Bamba. But if he's more than the minimum, it, that's not how it works. I will say this: there's another name I'd, I'd, I'd like throw in the mix here before we get out of here. The show's running a little long, but whatever. We're heading into free agency. You need an extra long show. If the Blazers don't use all of their mid-level exception money on a wing, say they end up with one of the cheaper wings on on that list as you head down, someone who's not going to command, you know, the whole 12 million bucks, someone who you can pay like six and a half, and then you have another six and a half dole out, I would consider bringing back Mason Plumley. Um, he... He probably had the best year of his career last year. He started shooting left-handed jumpers, which is pretty sick. Shoots left-handed free throws. Um, you know, he doesn't protect the rim, but he's a he's a like in the right spot position defender. Rebounds, plays hard, can handle the ball and pass. You can do a lot worse than Mason Plumlee as a backup center, but you're he's m- more than the minimum. So he's like a it, he's going to be way more than the minimum probably. Like he's 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 solid. So it, like if you split up the mid-level into a a cheaper wing and a, a more expensive big, I would go P- 
Plumlee is the, is the name at the top of my list. Okay, guess what? Tomorrow's the day, or today's the day as you're listening to this. Uh, Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific time, free agency begins. It's the moratorium. It's not actually free agency, but you can be you can start agreeing to deals with free agents, with your own free agents, with with free agents, unrestricted free agents on the market. Uh, you don't those deals will be signed next week, but the agreements are going to happen fast and furious on Friday. So that's going to be a ton of fun. Typically. The way the show works is I record these shows on in the evening, and so they come out day of, come out usually uh, Sunday morning, and then uh, that's Monday show, or Sunday Sunday evening, that's Monday show, and then Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, Friday morning, and that's your five shows for the week. I'm going to do a bonus show. I'm going to record a show after the, the free agent buzz ends. You're going to get a sixth show. There's actually a seventh show that's going to be waiting for your feed, in your feed over the weekend, a fun little thing I did. I recorded um, a couple a few weeks ago, 10 days back. Uh, so we're going to have seven shows this week, but there's going to be a free agency show. So come back and listen to that one. Um, I feel confident in saying you are not going to find another Trailblazers podcast that's going to record seven episodes this week. So... If you if you like what if you're interested you like what you're hearing tell your friends come back for more I appreciate you listening talk to you soon.